So how do you live bet basketball under the uh, betting both sides strategy that I'm, I'm sure people do this. It's just like straddling a stock. Honestly, it's very funny. The, the similarities between straddling stocks and betting both sides of a game uh, are really, are really very similar. So let me get into how you do this because this does win uh, of all of the betting things that I give advice for. You know, sometimes I try to put, you know, every single winner down and be like, all right, you're probably going to hit like seven of these eight. That, that's a, that's unbelievably tough. I try to try to make the algorithms do unbelievable things because I know their potential, but it's still it's still really difficult. So focusing in on optimal wagering strategies when you are going to be live betting and actually paying attention to the game, you'll see that the markets are going to fluctuate wildly on things that are absolute outcomes. Meaning, are the Mystics going to win or are the Sparks going to win? I'm going to focus on this one game because the algorithm says this is the closest game of all the games that are going on today, which start very soon. So because of that, it says if you're going to bet both sides of the game, meaning you're going to have money on both teams to win, <laughs> how can you possibly make money? Well, if their line is a positive line over better than 100 and you bet the same amount of money, on both teams, one of them will win and pay better than one to one and you'll be left with profit. Let me explain how that works. Let's say you bet on the Sparks to win the game at plus 130. That means you get $130 won plus $100 that you get back, your original wager you get back. So you end up with 230 if you bet $100 on the Sparks to win and they win. But what if they don't win? You're gonna lose hundred bucks. But if they do win, you get 230. So here's the logic between betting both sides. So at the start of the game, they're plus 130. We, the algorithm doesn't think they're going to win, except it thinks the injuries on the Mystics are significant enough that this game is going to be close and have lead changes. If there are lead changes in this game and the Sparks look like they're ahead at some point, you're going to be able to get the Mystics at a line that is much better than 154. You try to get them at a positive line. Let's say the Mystics go down by like six in the first half or something, and they drop down to like plus 110, right? Plus 110, $100 you wager, plus the 110 equals 210 you get back if the Mystics won and you bet them at not minus 154, but at plus 110 because they they started to fall behind in the sparks at some point in this game. And the line changed. That's what live betting does is the lines change every second. The lines are changing on these games so so you you do that and if you get into the situation where the sparks go ahead and the mystics become an underdog you have free reign to bet your hundred dollars at that line that's better than plus 100 and guess what happens no matter who wins one of these teams wins let's say the sparks win you make 30 bucks and you're 200 it's made 15 percent it's paid for pizza door dash at pizza that's what happened. Why? Oh, yeah, because you got both teams at a positive line and you just played off game flow. Well, what happens if the Mystics won? You only make 10 bucks because you only got them at plus 110. So it'd be advantageous to get them at better than plus 110. And if there are going to be multiple lead changes in this game, the opportunities for you to get these teams at positive lines go up meaning the number of occasions with which you have the opportunity to purchase one of these teams at a positive line, and then at some subsequent point in the game, the other team at a positive money line to win. It's, it's a good thing to keep track of. There's a, there's a lead change number that they will sometimes announce at how many lead changes there were in the game. That doesn't always translate to a change in line that goes positive. Sometimes the lead changes have to be a little more significant. So you can't use the lead changes as the sole guide for doing this, but the closeness of a game is kind of what we're trying to gauge here. And that's what the margin is doing. So it's going to say that the next closest game to try this on is the, is the fever dream game. Now the fever are plus 285 to start, which is a fantastic line, everybody. Right? So if you put a hundred on them, that's 385 you would get back. Now, You've also then got to have them somehow get ahead and make the dream be an underdog. And the dream are minus 340. That's a tougher 
tougher move. Like they're really going to have to show some sus like sustained lead. That's why it's not the best game to play this. When the line is already closer, that's fantastic. Because what you're playing off of is you're playing off the fact that as the game goes on and people think it's going a certain way, even early on, the, the line moves too much for reality. Like everyone kind of piles on and moves the volatility of the line so drastically that you're like, wait a minute, some girl just sunk a three quarter and they went from plus 130 to plus 190. Like I got another six, you know, 60% of my initial wager and value on a team to win, which is the final outcome because a one three pointer in the first quarter doesn't make sense. And the reason why it doesn't make sense is people are watching the game. And they're picking up the game and they're like, oh, wow, Mystics are crushing it. Sparks don't have a chance. Look, it's 9-2 in the first quarter. Doesn't mean anything. It's 9-2 in the first quarter. <laughs> there hasn't even been a timeout yet. It's a long game of basketball. So the propensity for people to move this line too much is great, which is why I don't really recommend betting on the one 130 before the game. I would say, and the way I'm going to approach this game, because I'm going to watch it, I'm, it's coming on the TV right now. I'm going to sit back. I'm going to hope the Mystics get off to a lead in the first quarter. When they do that, I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna wager on the sparks at a line that's hopefully like 200 or something, so that I get a possible 300 back. I'm gonna try to get the sparks at 200 or better early on. Then I'm gonna wait and say algorithm, do your thing and make this a close game because you said so. You said the sparks were healthier, so you get this juicy line if the sparks fall down early, and if they come back at all. Uh, you got a chance to cash this thing out for a profit because you got them at such a great line early. The only way you lose that completely is if the Mystics just tear it up and go straight up and never look back. Not anything in this algorithm says that that is the way the game flow is supposed to go because the Mystics are so injured and the margin is so low anyway, right? So you're looking at the algorithm saying, all right, where's the value? There's a little value on the Liberty here too. There, is there value in every single one of these underdogs? The answer is there's not really a lot of value apparently in the sky because the wings are healthy. And there's not really value in the fever other than the line is insane. These lines are insane though. That, that thing is when you see big numbers like this, you know, you could just try a little bit on it because it's it's tough for, for any game to go one-sided the entire way. These are professional women's basketball players, everybody. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a strategy that says, you know, is the game going to be close at all? If it is, try betting both sides of it. I can't recommend these other three games, although I kind of want to recommend the Liberty game. And that's the other one I'll probably try this with. But I can recommend the Mystic Sparks game. So if in summary, if you watch this game and have live betting availability, you, you get the Sparks at a positive line, hopefully better than this plus 130, hopefully something close to 200 early on if they take the lead and what happens if it goes the other direction if they take the lead the mystics it's going to be tougher for the mystics to move to that positive line early so you just really you really want to get a juicier line on the sparks early but if the mystics start to take the lead because you have the mystics still winning this game you still wait you wait until i'm sorry the sparks take the lead if the sparks take the lead and don't stop you still have to wait till the Mystics come back so that you can get a better line on the Sparks first. Um, because while you could have a chance of potentially getting the Mystics at plus 110, you'll see that this, does, this doesn't pay enough if they come back and win. You, you need to do better than that. I mean, you're, you're, you're trying to get either team at the higher line. So from a mathematical perspective, as you watch the game, you're simply watching the lines. And you're looking for what you think is going to be one of the higher numbers to ever show up because you're going to have the opportunity to do this multiple times in the game. That's what this says. I'm going to watch this game so intently on, on my phone to tell you how many episodes of that changeover there were, meaning like basic strategy. You, you bet this right off the bat saying this is supposed to work. So you should be able to do this in logical sense. That if you bet the 130, you will get an opportunity to get the Mystics at, at a better than 100 line at some point throughout the game. That's what it's saying. So you'll always have a chance to get 200 back or better and break even or be better. That's, that's what it's saying. 
So that's what it would say to do prior to the game, but knowing that if you're watching the game, which you need to be watching and, and being actively monitoring the situation and then taking the best lines available, um, you can catch it when you're watching the game because you see somebody sink a three-pointer and you see how that drastically affects the lines, which is why I, I don't want to tell you to bet the 130 before because this could probably get up to a few-point lead at some point in the first quarter. Why tie your money up with the plus 130 when you're going to be able to get plus 200 like five minutes into the game potentially. So that's why I'd say sit back and watch in a game like this. If you do anything, you nominally, you, you do actually throw a tiny bit on these two and potentially even the Liberty because this is insane. Uh, this is insane. Like the, the dream are not that great of a team that they should ever be minus 425. This is just craziness. Dallas is pretty good. This one's got a tougher chance of Chicago being as competitive, which is why the line is so bad. But you put a little bit on it, you'll, you'll be amazed how the cash out offers on these games, if they ever make it close, you can cash out a profit on these straight line wagers. So it's a fascinating way to follow live betting. And when all these games are chunked together in a couple hour period on a Sunday, I thought it nice to do the video because Boy, I, I I expect to make money betting both sides on games. The algorithm is confirming so much. So we'll see if there was never a chance the Mystics were at a positive line throughout the game. I will let you know in a video probably tonight. But the assurance that that will happen, that's a great question. I don't know, but I feel like it is 80% plus, close to 90%. So we'll see. I, I really, I really think it's a very high number historically, just just from watching live betting. And I, one thing I can guarantee you is that the line on the Sparks will vary by much more than two hundred points probably in the first half. Meaning you'll see them anywhere from between three hundred to minus two fifty, from to minus one hundred within minus one fifty within the first half. Like stuff always changes so drastically from what this is listed at that. Why not fuse in a very high paying number for whichever team you're going to choose so that you can get both in that situation? That's what the strategy does. It works. So we'll watch the game and see. Good luck. May all your games be volatile, especially basketball.